Hello guys, as promised today we are going to uh, make a mood board for a kitchen redesign and this is what we will have in the end of our tutorial. I expect it to be about 35-45 minutes long and we will um, discuss the main functions of uh, Procreate, making a mood board uh, in it using uh, different tools. So let's get started. First of all, this is uh, the mood board that I was making for this kitchen to set up um, the main directions in design. So it will be a lot of wood, uh, natural colors, really a simple, soft color scheme. And uh, we will take this image as our main one uh, to be a starting point. Uh, the kitchen is um, situated like that in uh, the apartment so in the next tutorial we will be making um, a perspective perspective to drawing with our camera set up uh, here and we will making uh, this corner projection of the kitchen uh, but uh, first of all let's uh, uh, start at the beginning and everything uh, begins at creating a mood board and uh, uh, preparing the files and um, usually we go for the pictures to pinterest and uh, i believe most of you know how uh, to make a board uh, in pinterest and uh, um, um, how to uh, create it. So uh, let's see if we are going to search for some chair uh, here. So there are a couple of chairs. Let's say we like this one here. Then um, we'd like to add it to a mood board. And for that purpose, we then uh, click save. And if the mood board, the board for that uh, particular project is not yet ready, then uh, you're uh, clicking here, create a mood board, and you create the board, board mood board name. Sorry, like a chair. No, no, furniture. Furniture for XXX project, for example, and then. Uh, you click next and your chair is added to that project uh, to that board in on pinterest and then for example you need another one and you save it already to the project that you've just created in pinterest uh, so after that my uh, workflow at least i go uh, to your home button uh, in pinterest uh, and then you select the um, uh, folder that you created for that particular project and then you can without any distraction open each file and then you save it download image and you download it to your uh, main folder of uh, the photos like uh, right now uh, in my main library there are lots of uh, photos and I'm sorry for this mess I was creating an invitation for the graduation party of my son uh, so you see this chair um, has now appeared in our main uh, category and uh, let's say I want to add it to my album that I've already created and I um, Tick this button here share and then I use here add to album and in here I have the uh, album created especially for this um, project and it uh, it's called kitchen toots and now in my main album here I have this chair added so then uh, all the uh, pictures that you will need to use in your mood board are uh, collected in one album uh, we get back to our main tool and it's called Procreate. I find Procreate a really powerful tool where you can arrange a lot of things. And here you see my kids love it. There are lots of projects here. And I go to my uh, sketching folder. And uh, for making this mood board, we will use a canvas size of uh, 35 centimeters per 29 centimeters. And uh, when I told that we are going to make it in 30 minutes, it's uh, like I'm doing it right now when I already know what I'm going to do. And of course, gathering the photos and uh, uh, arranging them and finding your perfect design usually takes a bit of time, but it's also really fun. So uh, let's get started and make this beautiful mood board. I go to this plus sign and uh, um, I would like to select a new canvas size here. And uh, I choose centimeters and uh, here, I uh, tick in 35 and height uh, will be 29 and the maximum DPI is uh, 350 and even 300 for the purposes of this video is enough and uh, what does it mean? It's like the quality, of, the print quality of your mood board and uh, this uh, quality also defines how many layers you will have add in the program and uh, how free, uh, freely you can uh, um, be with uh, the um, using of these layers. Uh, so right now, and it heavily depends on the capacity of your iPad. So with these big, rather big canvases uh, and the DPI quality set to 30, I will have 33 layers, which is more than enough uh, for me. And uh, now I create, and here we go, we can get started. I will sip my coffee. Okay, so um, 
we've gathered our references and we want to uh, place them in Procreate. So I drag this button here from the uh, bottom, uh, in the bottom middle of your iPad, you drag it, you drag it on top and um, in your, uh, in my last open on the applications, I have the photos. And I drag the photo here and that splits my screen. Um, uh, what I'm uh, going to do now, I'm going to um, click select and I will select all the photos I need for this particular mood board. So I will need this finish, uh, the kitchen cabinet finish. I will also need uh, these uh, hexagons, these hexagons, uh, wooden texture, this one and wooden panels. The vases I found nice uh, for the design of this kitchen. This will be our main lighting uh, about the um, bartender and this will be the spotlights. A really cool kitchen stove with the ventilation installed inside the stove. Uh, black sink, um, tap, uh, some of the accessories. Accessories are really nice to describe your design and communicate your message. They're like kind of setting the mood and giving the idea. Uh, so I will be using some of the accessories as well. Uh, as you see, I have a lot more pictures here and I've tried to arrange them as well or try to find the matching. But uh, uh, right now I know that I will, I will need only these particular pictures. Uh, let's see. Yes, and there is if the only one missing here is the bar stool, but we will find it in the main category. So I drag and drop these selected items into Procreate. And you see it's 22 items and each uh, one of them will appear on a separate layer. They are loading right now and in the meantime I will go to my uh, main uh, library and I will find this uh, bar table and a uh, bar chair, sorry, and I will drag it here and also I will need uh, the main uh, kitchen picture. And we won't be needing any of these photos anymore, I believe, so I can uh, hide that. Okay, uh, first of all, how do I start the process? Um, uh, I go to the layers and uh, you see all the layers are created on top, the background color is set to white, it's automatically, and I have one extra layer. And when I tick here and hold on this ticky, then that will be the only layer open. And for those purposes, I want to show you how I like uh, create my process, the process of creating of the mood board. I go to my some brushes, let's say uh, inking and then a script, it's a standard pen. And then I also prefer to switch uh, uh, drawing guide just um, to, to give me um, a feeling of proportion. And uh, I will edit the drawing guide, setting this guy here in the corner and uh, um, making the grid size bigger. So uh, it's just it's not an essential part, but it's just to begin to understand where the objects will be placed here in my canvas. So I do it like that and I uh, switch on the drawing guide, the drawing assistance, and I switch it here. My button for switching it on is here, so switch off, switch on. And the drawing assistant, what it does, it helps me uh, making just really straight lines as and works as a ruler. So I divide my canvas really roughly into these six areas and this will be my main reference. Um, reference um, square where I will place in my reference and then it will be here it will be finishes or materials uh, then it will be uh, like furniture here as a main part and uh, like yeah appliances lights and then Accessories. Uh, I believe I spelled it wrong, but uh, anyways, so it will be a rough placement of the objects in my mood board. And uh, then I will switch the reference image. I will select that layer and scale it so that it would be like, like that. Uh, I will now switch off the snapping because it's really not helping me here. At least it's a powerful tool, but not just for these purposes. Okay, and uh, I want to, it to be about here. Okay, and what I notice here that in this reference follow, I have some part that is not really interesting to me, so I want to cut it off. How do we do that? We go to the lasso tool, we select rectangle, and then I want to cut that piece off, arrow, and just throw it away by dragging out of the canvas. Next one. Um, let's uh, get to the bar top. And as you remember, I haven't yet um, I don't have any bar top here. We will need to create it and for that uh, we will learn how to use the um, perspective tool, the perspective distortion tool. And uh, what we will need is these uh, wooden panels. 
uh, I will now switch off the drawing guide as well because now it's a bit disturbing. Um, the image is clear, so my layer with the panels is selected and then um, I will now distort it. Arrow, distort, or at first I will make it longer than freeform deformation and I can deform it like that and then distort. And let's see, uh, let's say I want uh, the white top to be like that. Pretty much good like that. I will move it here and yeah, maybe a bit more and make it a bit narrower. Yeah, that's great. And now we'll make the top. Uh, for that, we will need this uh, texture here. I will need it two times, so I duplicate and uh, switch one of them. And this one, I go to distortion tool and I need to make the top. So I grab that corner and put it here, and another one here, and then just like that, so that we have a feeling that that bar top is going like into perspective. Yeah, like that. I will only close that corner there, so there will be no gaps. And then we will use the second one uh, to make the thickness of the bar top. Just like that, and of course uh, uh, our panels need to be need to have also thickness, so we can duplicate it. Uh, we can take it here like that. Now I put this layer on top. These two I can um, pinch them together, and it will become one layer. But doing so, you are switching on all other layers, and we don't need that. Uh, so uh, to turn all other layers off, we hold this button there. We switch this one on and this one on, and we make the, the, the thickness of the panels by um, first of all cutting the part that, that we don't. Oh, that was the wrong layer. That one we don't need. So, panels, panels, yeah, this is the right layer. Rectangle, we cut all the part that we don't need, and then we distort this part here. It would be much easier if I would duplicate this um, layer as well, but yeah, let's say we didn't do that. So with a rubber tool and the rubber, I have some uh, basic monoline uh, brush here, and I will now need to, to do that, and maybe let's place it like that. So more or less it's okay and um, what i think is really essential here is to show the shadows because now it's rather flat so with this layer selected we go to the hue saturation and brightness layer and we just uh, uh, draw the brightness a little bit lower and um, i think it was also it would be wiser to do that uh, to the bar top as well before i merge the layers but i merged it anyway and now i will need to solve the problem. And how do I do that? Uh, I go to the lasso tool, I uh, choose freehand selection, I put my, like I tap here at the corner and I tap there in the corner so I have a perfectly straight line. And now I select only that part of the uh, bar top, again hue saturation brightness, layer, and uh, I draw my light brightness a bit down. And now you see we have a bar top that is perfectly Oh, maybe not perfectly, but for the purposes, the purposes of this video, it is enough uh, to have it like that. And I see maybe it would be nice to show the bar top there as well, but we will leave it as it is just for now. Okay, the next step will be to introduce the bar stalls. And the problem with the bar stall here is that it has a wide background. So we select this layer and we scale the uh, reset. We scale uniformly our bar chair making it that big, and now we will need to get rid of that white background. Lasso tool again, automatic selection, and we tick on the white layer, and it automatically selects all the white it can found. But it can be other ways uh, when you are trying to do that, and it depends on the threshold of the tool. And you see, if your threshold is like um, uh, is over, um, is done a lot, then when you select the white color, it can it, it will select everything, and the tool won't work. So what you need is to um, 
to make sure that the selection threshold is um, is lower and then it will depend on the uh, the picture that you're using and the contrast in it how much of the threshold you will need to choose so it's just trying uh, each time and testing now, right now it is a bit too much as you see because uh, it also takes the highlight from my chair and i really don't want that so i put threshold just a bit lower again and i again go to the uh, selection tool and it's still too much okay yeah uh, like that is working good for me and now i'm selecting all the white layers and now i can try to increase the selection threshold and see when this value will be really too much now right now it's eating some of the highlights here and there and i don't want that so this is really okay for me right now and i, I use the uh, arrow tool to then drop the drag and drop uh, the white background of the canvases so this is my chair right now and on the white background you won't see any distortions but if we place our chair here it's like visible that we uh, have some inaccuracies in our uh, model and that can be cleaned with the eraser if if you really need that and if you drag and hold your eraser it will uh, erase with a really like a ruler it will erase with a straight line so like that and in that way you can clean your model um, I won't be um, spending a lot of time on doing that. I will just place my chair here. I will make it a bit smaller, like that. And I will need a couple of them. So I will duplicate the chair and I will uh, just put it there. And maybe it gets smaller in the perspective and it stands behind, like that. Uh, for now, I'm really happy with the design and I want to pinch those layers together. Again, everything is on, I don't need that, so I hold this button here, only the chairs appear, then I will need the these guys here, and I would like them to be on the same layer as well. And then the chairs also, we will make a group, because I'm all, I already know that I'm happy with the design. So they will be grouped, or rather, they will be together. So I just leave this one here, and I want to make them smaller. So my furniture group is somewhere here. Okay, and above uh, the table we have uh, some lamps hanging, and this will be the main lamp. And um, um, it's a great lamp, but we still need to get rid of the white background. And we... <coughs> Sorry. We already know how to do that. So we go to Lasso tool, with automatic selection on, we select by holding the threshold where we need it, and with arrow tool, just drag the right background back. And I would like this cord here to be longer. So there are two ways to do that. One way is to choose the color of the cord, uh, switch on the drawing assistant, and then just draw it like that. It's a good method, but if you would like to have that mm, highlight or texture that the cord has, and I'm not sure whether you see it, but it's a core texture here. So I would like to uh, it to be done other way around. So I delete those changes. And what I do next, I, I um, select the lasso tool rectangle. I select this cord here. Uh, even no, not like that. I just select this part here. Swiping with my three fingers, I choose duplicate. And here the snipping will work greatly because now we need to um, stretch it like on top so we put it here and then we do it a couple of times we just repeat this process it's too much like that uh, I um, pinch those layers to have my cord longer okay duplicate it's rather unhandy uh, that all the layers are switched on but yeah it's like it works right now so I will need such a long cord here and now i find it really nice and i pinch those layers together and what i need is this group and this group and so we now show that the lamp is hanging on top like that okay. next one uh, another light uh, that we will have uh, will be the spotlight and here again we repeat the procedure with the late 
delete the white background and then I will need two, two of these guys one will be flipped horizontally and you see the snapping is now helping to hold those two models on the same lines now I'm happy with it, I'll pinch those layers together and I place those guys here and make them a bit smaller like that Okay, the next interesting tool uh, that we will use is uh, recolor with the gradient map. For that, I will need the finish of the kitchen cabinet placed here on top and here so that you can see it clearly. And uh, as you can recall, our kitchen is really gray and wood. But I found the design of this cabinet is what I need and I just need to get it to the right color. So how do we do that? We go to the uh, hue saturation brightness. Uh, oh no, we go to the adjustments tools and here we select the gradient map layer and um, now it applies just random um, gradient from the library and uh, I will create my own gradient and it's gray right now like I clicked on the plus sign and it created just a gray gradient and what it's made it's a color so the darker, the, the darker colors and shades they became black and the, the uh, highlights and uh, the highlights are white and everything in between is actually the color of our cabinet but it shouldn't be that dull gray and it shouldn't be also that dark so I will click here <coughs> sorry and I will um, go to more violet uh, color, classics here, and I like it will be a bit like that, just a hint of color there, just a little bit. And the white, it will need to be just a little bit less, just like that. And I already like it. So we will put this cabinet here. Lamp. We will need to find a better place for it, maybe like that. But we will uh, rearrange everything after all and find a better place for that. It's a part of creative process, so no worries there. Uh, then I want to add the appliances. As you remember here, I decided to put my appliances and that will be the coffee machine thing uh, and the stove. So I found this stove model really cool. It's Miele stove and it has a ventilation here. I find it a really nice design. I would like to have it in my kitchen already. So we repeat the project, uh, process by deleting the white background. Here I needed to uh, set the threshold a bit higher. Okay. And I want to place it like under my main reference here. Yeah. And uh, the snapping here helps to make sure that these objects are the same dimension, the same width. And now it uh, looks organically. Uh, done. We will do the same with the sink and the tap. So I prefer it to be a bit bigger. I delete the white background. Okay, great. Now I select the tap here as well, just a pinch bigger. And okay. No, it was too much, you see. I undo with my two finger taps. Yeah, that's great. No, it's too much reset. This model is rather contrast, so the threshold need, need, doesn't need to be very high. Yeah, you see, it's still. So it, we should make it uh, to make sure it's minimal, really. Like that. I will place it here and I will group these guys because they belong together and maybe make them a bit smaller. Okay, great. Then uh, I will repeat this procedure with um, other small things that I have here and I will place uh, here the coffee machine, for example. The coffee machine. But sometimes it, the snapping works not the way I like it. 
It's a kind of snapping to the closest objects and it's not always handy. The next object will be kitchenware. And this one has gray background, so we will now see how we will delete it. By tapping there, I make the selection a bit more precise. Sometimes it works better, sometimes a bit worse, but still it's a nice and easy and really fast way to delete it not using any hard software and without using computer even. So you can always do that in a train while commuting to work. So we have some garlic here, which we don't need. So we just erase them with the eraser tool. In the kitchenware guys, needn't be that big. So I just scale them small and place them randomly around. Next one will be knives. The same project process here. And you see it's rather quick, except of we are now we now selected also the knife, so we need to get rid of that selection. This is perfect. Great. Scaling the knives, putting them there. Great. And then uh, I can already compound this one, this guy, the pepper and salt, they all hold the same style. So I like them to be on my mood board. Sometimes you have this crease here, so you just uh, erase it. And I know lovers at the moment, we don't need them. Yeah. Okay, maybe that's enough for, um, for the kitchenware. I will combine these layers and I want to make sure I put it here on top and just a bit bigger. Then I want to make um, my main reference just a pinch smaller, like that. I will turn now the snapping because I want them to be uh, one size, like that. Okay. Ah, yeah. Now it's one size. Um, this one. Great, and then I will place the coffee machine here and make it a bit bigger than, but for it to be able to have a bigger impact on the image than this kitchenware. So this side is uh, pretty much good right now, uh, and we are moving forward to adding some accessories here. And we'll start from the uh, with the towels and other stuff. So the towels, we repeat the process here. We delete the white background, swipe it away. And we'll take the towels here and put it somewhere. And the next one will be the clock. Here I don't need to replace uh, the white background because I believe it will be standing somewhere here. Um, then there will be a couple of guys that will have the background, for example, these uh, towel holders. And I want it to be rectangle. The, the picture, I mean, so I choose rectangle and I cut off these parts. Now I take this picture and rotate by holding that green holder and place it somewhere here, like that. And I still miss a couple of references now, I understand, but we will load them just in a minute. Now the dishes. And here we won't delete any white color. Mm, I will have this corner having a background because it will be too much of a hassle to delete that white color and you already know how to do that. Here as well, I will need to delete just a bit of the image for it to be like more in line with. Okay, like that. So they are the same size and maybe I will stick them two together like that. Pretty nice. And uh, I understand that I miss some flowers. Of course, we will need flowers there, and the flowers will be these guys. And I also want it to be the same size. And in order for it to be the same size, we will cut some of the borders. Rectangle selection. It's too much. I undo by picking two fingers. Undo. Just like that. 
right. Yeah. So this corner is giving um, us uh, the sense of mood, calm, natural, nice. Uh, we can stitch those layers together. Yeah, almost perfect. And now we can stitch them together. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so keep your layers organized. That always helps. Like now, I've lost my layer. Ah, here it is. Yes, and. Uh, I want this guy to appear here as well. Uh, delete the white background. Automatic. No, that's too much. Like that. And now I see that mm, it's a bit too red. You know, we have some subtle colors here, and I want my mood board to have this feeling of calmness. So I go to uh, hue saturation, and I decrease a little bit the saturation, and I increase more yellow, just a pinch of it, like 51%, 51, yeah. otherwise it becomes too green. Yeah, like that. And I want it to be here. And then the towels will go will appear here below and then what we miss on our board is this uh, set of um, lasers okay and I want to delete the background I find it distracting so here we will need to play a little bit with the threshold Just maybe delete it in several steps. And it can be done, it's not that hard. You just need to practice to understand where the threshold will play. And be a bit patient. And you can always use the rubber tool when you really need. To clean something like that. Okay. Perfect. And I think the last image that we... No, not the last. We have several more images to go. So let's uh, arrange these flowers. The flowers, what I need to do with them, I select that layer. And I want to leave all the flowers. So uh, first of all, I use the freehand selection and I go like that. Anyway, invert. Um, Cut and paste. So we have the background on another layer and we delete it. Now with this layer, uh, I use the automatic selection and then I delete some more stuff that I don't really need here. Well, like that. And we use some eraser just a bit to clean it up. And it's perfectly okay for me right now. It can be done better, but we are trying to keep our time in some uh, margins. Okay, so uh, the last thing here, uh, it will be to introduce the finishes and the materials. And I already see that I'm uh, really happy with these guys, these four guys here at least. And I want to, uh, to make sure they all on one layer and then I make them mm, I select that layer and I make it just a bit smaller. Then these two guys are also good together. I pin them together and I scale them like that. Uh, then the table group, I will want it to be a little bit lower like that. 
And then this beautiful flower we just created as well, just a bit more. And then we move further to finish it. This lamp, I think it also needs to be somewhere here, let's say. And the kitchen cabinet, I find it more attractive as it is when it is a bit bigger and having just a bit more impact. Yeah, and then the lamp. Like that. Okay, and then the finish. Uh, in my other tutorial about the bathroom, and I will try to add the link uh, uh, to it into the video somewhere. I just don't know how to do that. Uh, but if I won't manage to do that, just uh, uh, go to my channel and open the bathroom tutorial mood board. And there you will learn how to make uh, round shapes with the materials. So that can be handy in a lot of mood boards and designs. So uh, I see that I, would, I didn't load um, another wooden texture that will come on the floor. Um, we will load it right now. Uh, this one is will be sticking a bit from here. So uh, mainly the idea is uh, that um, this finish, uh, these hexagon tiles will be used here. I don't know actually the good word to it in English. In uh, Russian uh, we call it uh, kind of apron. Uh, but I, I don't know, maybe it's some other word here. You can put the right word in the uh, comments. I would appreciate that. Uh, so these hexagon tiles, they will go there between the cabinets. These tiles, they will be laying on the floor, creating the smooth um, transition uh, from the tiles to the wooden floor that will be covering all other surfaces in the apartment. So we need to have that wooden texture. And uh, it was also in my main folder. And this will be uh, the texture that I need. Okay. Mm, I, uh, I will now group these guys and drag them on top and inside the group I will select this uh, this guy I will place it here and I just need the same rectangle to be cut out of this texture so select rectangle I uh, drag it from the corner here and you see I have a great selection I invert the selection and uh, drag the unneeded part away from the canvas and then I can drag this guy here like that and just uh, underneath the hexagon tile so this will be my group i think those layers together and i want to scale them down a bit just just like that uh, so what do i see here is that i can uh, switch off that layer that i had as a uh, background for me to just to place my designs and uh, now i like it how how it appears to be uh, it's nice maybe these flowers here can be put somewhere there just scaled a little bit and maybe flip horizontal to face another direction like but it is not that bad so uh when you're ready with designing your board, mood board you would um, of course want to add some text here and the uh, text is really important if you want to uh, give the names to the object that you've placed here some, some uh, tree, brand names or something like that uh, we will not go into that much uh, detail here so I will now only group all my layers together to scale my design a bit um, more uh, so group in this group we go into that one inside so now when I have the group selected I can scale the whole set of objects and I don't want to finish them all on the same layer because you know when you work with a customer there can be changes done uh, and made and uh, this or other objects can be replaced by others so I uh, really tend to uh, hold the layers apart and uh, just for the sake of illustration I pinched some layers together to show you but right now I'm making these guys a bit smaller I place them in the middle of the canvas and I want on uh, the next layer to introduce a frame so I um, switch on the drawing assistant I select a nice uh, gray color that we had here like like that for example the drawing assistant on i draw such kind of frame here uh, like that and in this frame i will place some text so on top i add uh, i go to the add button and add text and uh, what we write here, we write here uh, kitchen design. Okay, then this one is really not what we want, just kitchen design. 
and it won't change the color when you change it here uh, but nevertheless we, we need to uh, to select all those letters and then introduce some nice color there and let's put it like it will be somewhere here so we will know what will be fonts and everything the color is all right for now you can play with the colors um, and we will now uh, select all the um, letters and just use some uh, find some some nice uh, font that that serves our needs I used something different. It was, yeah, like that, for example. So it will be, you know, change the height. I don't know. I want it to be something really basic, but still nice. Okay, this can go on eternally. Let's say on Gal Gauri. Um, we place it here great and then we will add maybe a signature here so add another text add text we are underscore others to fill underscore you know and the and then you I select select the link uh, link that no and just a bit smaller like that so you add the text and you can add as much text as you like and whatever you like here like you can play more with the orientation of your pictures you know right now how to recolor the cabinets using the gradient tool where you can select the darkest uh, and the um, lightest color you can also select the middle color, color and create some interesting effects you know, for your uh, objects we also uh, learned how to uh, make the mood board in pinterest how to save the files to your ipad how to import multiple photos uh, to procreate just by selecting all the photos in your album and dragging them into the scene and um, deleting white background uh, distorting objects in perspective and making from simple uh, textures uh, some uh, more or less complex uh, interior objects like the bartender here and uh, um, yeah, this uh, was it for today. And next time we will make a perspective drawing using these objects here and implementing them into a hand rendered illustration to show uh, how everything uh, here will come into place in our design for this particular kitchen. Thank you for being here with me. You can always put a like to this video and uh, that supports me a lot and encourages to make more educational videos for you and to share my knowledge with Procreate. Hope it was, uh, um, that you learned something here and see you next time. Bye!